Today, I'm talking about mothers who are dealing with challenging problems with their children. In other words, like autism or cerebral palsy. In other words, real challenging things. So stay tuned for the teaching. Well, here at Cecil and Lisa Paxton Ministries, we've made the decision that we're going to sow into your life the Word of God. You can go to our website and you can download all of our digital, both the book, both the um, audio teachings for free. So we're sowing that into your life. I encourage you to take advantage of God's Word for the benefit of your heart. I'm talking about mothers who have to constantly deal with the challenges of a problem with their child. You know, I use a couple of examples of like autism or cerebral palsy. Although sometimes the physical symptoms of those problems can be so severe that it's their child, so they're constantly dealing with it, and it's a challenge to their heart. You know, it's a benefit in 1 Peter 5, 7 to cast our cares upon the Lord, to establish our heart to the point that we take significance off of the challenges of life. It's like we, we love the child, but when it comes to the problem, we separate the problem from the child in the sense that when it comes to the problem, we have no respect for the problem and we stop respecting it, but we still love the child. I tell you, it's a benefit to your heart as the parent to do that. Because if you put the problem and the child together and mix that problem with that love you have for the child, you'll become part of the problem. You'll produce anxiety. And we're to cast the care upon the Lord. So in John's Gospel, chapter 16, is some insight I'd like to share today because you see, being the one that's directly involved and the one that um, it's your child, I want to encourage you that you have the help of the Holy Spirit. It's not about you trying to do everything yourself. You, out of your own understanding, trying to figure every single thing out, because eventually, if you do that, you'll come to the end of self. You'll come to a place where you just feel helpless and hopeless. No, you need to trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding, as the Scripture tells us in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 4. But John chapter 16, and starting verse 12, says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now, Jesus said. However, when the He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. He will glorify me. He will take up what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that He will take what is mine and declare it to you. In John 14, 26, it says this, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance those things which I've said to you. You see, you've got the Holy Spirit as a believer in Christ on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit, you're to establish a relationship with him because he's the Spirit of Christ. When he speaks, it's Jesus speaking to you because by the Holy Spirit, he never speaks of himself in the context of his own will. No, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are one. So when he speaks to you, you that he's the spirit of truth. He will not lie, as the scripture tells us in John 16, 12. And he'll guide you into truth, truth that is found in Christ Jesus. You see, when you find truth in the problem, that's when you got a heart problem, uh, issues of unbelief being established in relationship to the problem. But when you're finding truth in Jesus Christ and he'll guide you into that truth, then there's freedom. Freedom from the problem to the point that all of a sudden good becomes to become real in reality to your heart. You see, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, know this, he's your helper. Identify with the Holy Spirit as the one that helps you. And don't limit him. Let him help you. Because it says, whom the Father is in name, he will teach you. The Father has sent the Holy Spirit, Jesus said in his name. It says, he will teach you all things. That is powerful in the fact that it's now in Christ given to you. It's in him, Christ, the authority of Christ, because the name of Christ, because it said in my name, he will teach you all things. In other words, there's not one problem, not one situation that's impossible in every single circumstance of life, in all things. In other words, he will teach you. Let him be your teacher, because you see how the Holy Spirit will help you is teach you. You'll get God's perspective in that situation. And if you learn to do what he says, you'll get his results. And then he'll bring to remembrance. In other words, those times when it just seems like the weight of the problem's there and it's like, what do I do? 
all of a sudden the Holy Spirit will speak to you. He'll show you what to do. He'll give you direction. He'll give you guidance. You know, he, you see, you can hear from the Holy Spirit do what he says and get his results in an area of life where it's like suddenly you're seeing change come from God. You're seeing things getting better instead of things getting worse in that situation or just constantly being bad all the time. I'm telling you, Christians who don't cast the care upon the Lord, who don't establish relationship with the Holy Spirit to be their teacher, limit the Lord in their life because that's why the Jesus sent the Holy Spirit so that you're not by yourself. It's not you trying to live for God in your own strength. You can learn to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean and trust in the Holy Spirit as, as your teacher because when he speaks the same as the Father and the Son, they're all one together as your helper, as your teacher, the one who will show you on what to do because he'll bring things back to your remembrance. I tell you, it's beneficial to your heart, as Philemon 6 says, that the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Now, an expanded translation of that same scripture says, and I pray that the participation and in sharing of your faith may produce and promote full recognition, appreciation, and understanding and precise knowledge of every good thing that is ours in identification with Christ. You see, when you come to identify with Jesus and the promises of God, truth found in Jesus Christ, your heart is changing to the point that the problem, significance is coming off of the challenge from your child with a problem that's there, and all of a sudden you're able to see good and you communicate good. You begin to communicate on the goodness of God. You begin to speak things out of your mouth concerning the promise of God that become real. Like a mother that was in one of my meetings with a child with autism, and when I prayed for the child, there was a change, but it was a minor change. But you see, this mother had been on the Word of God, and the Word of God opening up by the Holy Spirit being her teacher to the point that she could see good, she was speaking good, good was coming out of her mouth, but to, but to the point that when that minor change came, she saw it. I tell you, there's mothers that I've prayed and they can't see anything good because the first thing they look at is a problem. They look to, to, to see if there's any sign of the problem there and if there's any sign of the problem, then it's like they can't see any change at all. They can't see any good at all. This mother did and, you know, within three days, I'm talking to her on the phone later as the test, fullness of the testimony goes and that child not only experienced good, but changed physically to the point that it was a wonderful testimony. So praise God, you can experience the goodness of God as well because all the promises belong to you in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm.